everybody. My name is Timothy Trespass, and I'm still a targeted individual. Um, <coughs> one does not always remember to put one's little secret hidden camera on before one goes to these appointments, because one does not expect to be, I don't know, maybe I gotta get, just do it all the time, because I wish I had recorded this. I, I just went to the Brooklyn Housing Initiative, okay? It is now 2.30. Uh, these people say they're there from 9 to 5. And I went in, in an hour. They say, come back, you'll be back in a half an hour. So I come back an hour later. Yeah, there's all these 20 people in there. And uh, this guy is telling me, oh, I'm sorry, they left already. I don't know anything about where the... Can I make an appointment? I, I don't know anything about... So, what are you doing here? Oh, we borrow the office from Tuesday to Thursday. Uh, okay, so what is it you're doing? Well, it's housing, but it's something else. Okay, you want to tell me what else? It, no, it's housing, but I, I don't know. I can't... Like, could you be any less communicative? Could you not tell me anything? And, you know, it's very strange. Like, all right, it has to be a real estate agent or something local, because there's all these, like, well-dressed people with applications, and clearly I'm not <laughs> one of those people. So he's like, eh, we borrow the office. So, you know, I've been calling this woman, leaving messages. This, Yolanda Coca, who said, oh, don't worry, I'll go with court with you. I know all about what's happening in Bushwick and I can help you, blah, 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 blah. It's turning out to be one of these, uh, you know, run around, waste your fucking time bullshit things. And I've seen so many of these while trying to get help. Um, you now my father's like, why don't you call this agency? Why don't you call that one? Why don't you call your representative? Why don't you call your state? I have. I've called them. I've been to their offices, you know, <laughs> sent them emails. And I've gotten, like, the biggest, the most activity in return I've gotten from them is a letter saying, a form email saying, thank you for contacting senator, congressperson, whatever person, blah, blah, blah. Uh, your mail is important to us, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And I've never heard another word from any of them. So, you know... This, this idea that government works for people that my father seems to have is just not... <laughs> either is completely untrue or they have some special way of recognizing who not to deal with. Uh, because, <laughs> you know, anyway, I'm like here trying to pull it all together and see where the hell we're going to live and trying to get money, extra money, so we could actually do it and trying to prepare Petra for the fact that if we don't get off our asses, we will be in the fucking street because these people are not playing. You know, they, they did all this crazy shit already. Now they're taking us to court. And uh, the result of an eviction proceeding in a holdover is usually that the landlord gets you evicted. We don't have rent control or rent stabilization. I'm not legally disabled. And uh, there's really nothing, you know, other than the horrible shit they did to us, which we never reported to the police or filed the appropriate whatever. It's because we just want to be left alone. But, uh, you know, that's how you play this game. And we didn't want to play. So basically we're going to be saying, uh, okay, well, they did all this horrible stuff and, you know, you want to stay, and the landlord's going to say, you can't stay. you got to get out. you got this long to get out. And we're going to say, okay, well, we've been trying to find a place, and here's all the numbers we call, here's all the agencies we talk to, and then they're going to start asking us for money, and, uh, you know, there's the whole big problem if they get a judgment awarded against us, and we're really fucked, man. You know, and I believe that's what they want to do, is take us to court and fuck us well in court. You know, they, they couldn't do it. They didn't do it one way, so they're going to do it another way. And I just have to hope and pray that, uh, you know, A, the judge will recognize that this guy is a greedy, lying manipulator. 
uh, B, that, you know, we're just some poor people living in a poor neighborhood that's now skyrocketing value and we're being pushed out. Um, and maybe they'll give us a little bit of an opportunity to get out, but it's going to say, you know, you had four months already. And, uh, what did you do? And we'll say, well, here's all the numbers we called, here's all the people we've spoken to, here's all the apartments we've looked at, here's all the rooms we've looked at. You know, and, uh, it's about the best we can do and hope that, uh, that these things are, are expedited. Like I said, 30 days or two adjournments, whichever comes first, whichever is sooner, then they can ask you for a deposit for use in occupancy, and that's a whole question too, because we were only paying 600 for a portion of the place and use of the other place, and then we didn't get to use any of it for a while, and, you know, it's, it's in disrepair, and no kitchen sink, and no heat in, uh, in one of the rooms, you know, I just... Uh, I don't know. The judge is going to look at this, going to balance it all out, say, okay, they fucked you over, then they were nice, and now it's about equal, and it's probably time. And he's going to say, you got to get out, you got this long to go, and the marshal's going to come. And then she's going to start freaking out, patron, screaming and yelling, and, oh my god, blah, 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 blah. like what happens every time. Because she can't, she hates moving, and we've been so discriminated against, discriminated against and forced to move, you know, ten times. Um, the last few times we managed to get a year, each one just about, nine months, seven months. But before that we were moving every month, every two months. They were, you know, one place they told us we had to move out the day we moved in. You know, <laughs> uh, just, you know, and of course my mother um, uh, convinces my father that, gee, it must be because there's something wrong with them. It must be because, you know, they're using drugs or they're, they're not paying their rent or, or something irresponsible. But no, none of that is the case. We, we mind our business. We're quiet. We're polite. We're friendly. You know, we, we pay the bills on time. Every time we've managed to pay the bills, we've paid more than our share without complaining. You know, we've offered to, do, it's just, you know, what are you going to do? You can't, 47-year-old guy who's had his life ruined and can't seem to get benefits and targeted and all this other shit and, you know, and praying and hoping and, and, and the little bit of, uh, you know, God has looked out for me, for us, in a way and provided, you know, little bits of, uh, of safety and a roof and food and warmth and clothes and medicine, a little bit of health and whatever, ability to talk to others and so, you know, but uh, having faith, you know, like you, you have faith, but you gotta do stuff. I can't just say, I trust God is gonna help me and just sit there in the fucking street because I'll be sitting there in the fucking street till I freeze to death. You know? So, I don't know how this works, man. I have faith. I have faith as small as a mustard seed, you know? And sometimes it's bigger and it really should be even bigger, but I have this. You know, this thing in my head that they're doing, and the pain and the forgetfulness and the anxiety and panic attacks and the fear and the, you know, it's not, um, I don't know, when you're experiencing it, it's just like it's real, even though it's not real. And it feels real is real, and um, you gotta deal with it, so. Anyway, I was really hoping my father would, would wave his magic wand and say, all right, Timothy, you know, one last time before I die, I'm going to help you out and give you a place to live so you can at least have a year off to, you know, without worrying, having a lease you can fight for. And I know you'll pay your rent because you have been. And, you know, Petra is a godsend. Thank you. And, you know... I don't trust you. I, you're irresponsible. I'm not going to get involved in some shit. You're going to fuck me over and your mother fucked over. Yeah, well, I've never really fucked my parents over, but uh, whatever, man. 
they got they got all the money they made, whatever money they got, a couple hundred thousand dollars or three hundred thousand or whatever they got put away, they put in an annuity, um, <laughs> and they bought themselves a condo uh, for a couple hundred grand on the Cape, where they still got to pay two grand a month for whatever it is, uh, you know, the, the, the fee, the maintenance fee, you know, because God forbid uh, I could have come home. I, I, I told them, I said, we'll move home with you back to Andover, and I'll do all the work in the house, you know, I'll take care of all that stuff you can't take care of, climbing on the roof and doing with the gutters and dealing with all the, you know, I'll do it. Oh, no. As soon as I mentioned that, they sold the house so fast, and, uh, they put it on the market, it was gone the next day, which means it was undervalued. The real estate agents played them. Whatever, anyway, you know, I would have done it differently. I would have bought a small house for myself and my wife and, and paid somebody to... But I don't know, maybe they worked it out, and the property taxes and the whatever comes out the same. I don't know, man. But these are people who, who really want nothing to do with me <laughs> you know as little as possible when my father came after the first day after I gave him all this crap about everything and went through my whole life story again and you know I mean he's suffered he's he's in pain he cries thinking about me he wishes I could have a nice life and he you know he sort of understands that it's not my fault but uh, you know they don't know what to do and the one thing they could do, he's afraid to do, because he thinks somehow, I don't know, mind control got him, or a Narcanon got him, or whatever, some crap that filled his head with, with lies. Because really, um, no, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter at this point, you know. <laughs> uh, I just had this, this, you know, this wish, this hope, this thing inside that like if somehow only they could understand what I've learned that that you know my whole life and all the fucked up decisions I've made and all the stupid shit I've done was based on the fact that I was being manipulated that I was t you know taken and traumatized uh, abducted uh, hypnotized given sodium pentothal program and and you know I fell for it I didn't know I had no fucking clue I thought that, that my life was just like normal whatever that means you know I, I didn't know that uh, people could get into your mind that way that people could cause you to think that that your actions are your own ideas and that they're the right actions and you know I had no idea and I just was, you know, so desperately thinking that maybe there was some way I could explain that in those short moments and last time. You know, I handled that so wrong. But what can I say? I'm a mess. You know, targeting has really fucked me up. <laughs> as high-functioning as I am, I'm, you know... Um, I don't know. Faith in God, right? Faith in God. You have faith in God and God protects you. But you still go through all this horrible suffering and torture and torment. It doesn't stop. So what does that mean? You know, God loves you and God's willing to, to give you these things and, you know, care for you, but you're still going to suffer. A lot. What, what does that mean? Some people take it to mean that God doesn't exist. And that was one of the things they wanted me to believe. They actually got me to say it with their magic mind control mimicry. And I realized later that that wasn't even me talking. Yeah, you can see that the, the stress and the, you know, the lines in my face and the holes and the wrinkles and the under eyes and all that shit. And it was interesting, when my father came, they turned it off or down for a bit, and I actually looked good. He's like, you look good. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. As soon as he got on the train, as soon as he got on the train, they turned it on 11. 
and I thought literally that like my head was gonna explode from the inside out. Uh, you see that little woman there walking by in the corner? Yeah, she lives down the road in what was once a single room occupancy house, a rooming house, that now, you know, there's like 20 people in there and most of them are, are mentally ill. Uh, they have mental health issues and they're being managed with medication. They're not a danger to themselves or anyone else. They just have a hard time dealing with normal life. They got their benefits, they got their little room, they share the bathroom. And the inspectors came and said, Sorry, we're gonna have to close this place down because somebody paid them off and wants to buy it. And get these people out of here, we're gonna get all these ugly, stupid, poor, junky, trash, crackhead losers out of this place. All the, the illegal immigrants and all the drunks and all the fools. And all the poor people, they're all gonna go. And Bushwick is the up and coming place to be. There's all this stuff in the New York Times. They're, they're pushing it like it's, uh, you know, it's the best thing since sliced bread. There's nothing here in Bushwick, folks, except overpriced real estate and the sadness of poor people who lost their $800 a month homes and have very little option as to where they're gonna go now where they're going to put their children, how they're going to get to work, all that stuff. There are thousands of people here in Bushwick right now worrying about the same thing we are. Where are we going to live? How are we going to afford it? And what is this being driven by? Greed. It's being driven by greed. Greed. And I got to wonder if, you know, I mean, I know this may be uh, one of these self grandize myself delusional whatever things but it just seems like every place I've lived for uh, uh, any reasonable amount of time in the last 12 years has been purchased <laughs> by either a company called related group of companies uh, they bought buildings that, that you know took up entire city blocks they bought my building they bought you know brand new construction on 43rd street they bought so much to, anyway they're, they're buying it all up who are they what are they doing anyway i don't like the system i don't like the country anymore and i don't like what they're doing with technology i don't like what they're doing to us and we're we're already enslaved you know we're already enslaved to their system of, of sigil magic debt money paper we're already enslaved to their, everything has to run on hydrocarbon fuels at 80% inefficiency for $5 a gallon. And, uh, you know, the, on the grid, can't get off the grid. We don't want you to grow your own vegetables. I mean, th this is uh, worse than the Nazis in some ways because, well, the Nazis were paid by the Americans to do what they did, and then most of them came here. So... You know, I don't know. Anyway, that's my rant. Thanks for listening. God bless you all.